Hey guys and gals, it's me Norex and welcome back to Intermediate C++ programming tutorial. So in this video we'll be talking a little bit about the const keyword, what it's all about and what it stands for, all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. Alright, I have something in my clipboard, let me just paste that right here. Uh, as you can see I've just opened up my lovely project that we've been working on since the beginning. So what the hell is const keyword or const or whatever? So const is nothing but a short version of constant. All right? Const is the same thing as constant. It means you can't really change it. It's constantly the same thing. And that's basically all this means. Now we have a couple of different use cases or scenarios that you can use const in. So the first one is a const attribute. I can say const pi, let's be cliche, is equal to 3.14f, or rather const float pi, something like that. So, or rather, something like this. Alright, so it's 14, 15, <coughs> sorry. So, const pi is this much. Now, here's the thing. When I declare an attribute as a const attribute, I can use pi in anything I want, so float f is equal to pi plus pi, you know, just like that. Simple, easy, what the, oh yeah, I'm sorry. So float fs, for instance, because this guy was named f. So, as you can see, I can use it easy peasy. But because it's a const, I can't give it any other number. As you can see, it's written here, expression must be a modifiable l value. Uh, well, l value, it's just not focused on the what l value means, but let's just focus on the first part expression must be modifiable when you make something const it can't be modified from that point on so yeah that just be careful with it and this is uh, we will talk about why we should sometimes use const um, after after I've talked about all these all, all this stuff not just yet anyhow so this is the first usage of call const keyword you can just put it in the uh, in the back of a variable and then you have your const variable okay so that was the first part now we have member attributes that can also be const so I can go right into my class foo and I can make something like const x alright or const int x but here's the thing if I don't give it a va value right here let me just go ahead and put it right there Okay, if I don't give it a value right here, and if I try to do something like x equals 10, there will be issues, right? And as you can see, there's a there's an error here. We'll talk about that soon. So, as you can see, I can't really give it a value because it's not modifiable, and I can't really have it set to no value. I should be able to do something like this. Then these errors will go, but this is bad design. So, what's the solution? Well, the simple solution is to use the member initializer. Something like this will fix our problem. So you can use constant stuff within your uh, your class, but the thing is it has to be uh, in dot x. Okay, that there we go. The thing is it has to be initialized in either the member initializer or in the header file, which I do disagree with. Okay, so don't do this at all. There, you know, there are some circumstances, but really, don't do that. Alright, so this is basically how we do things in, uh, in classes. Alright, that's how we initialize a constant with the member initializer. Okay, so that's the second usage. Let's go with the next one. Void get something const. So as you can see, I've already used this guy right here, and I told you that I will explain it later on. Uh, this guy, basically what it means is that you can't change anything from the class within this function. So let's just go ahead and make another int. Let's say int y, and just like that, and then I'm going to give y something like 5. So y5, some quick stuff like that, so something like that, in.y. Okay, so now we have y. y is 5. And we're actually going to see what this keyword does. If I try to set y to anything else, there will be an issue. Expression must be a modifiable L value. So 
everything from within the scope of this function, everything that this function can see outside of itself is constant. This function can't change anything because it's a constant function. And so that's basically what it means. We usually put that there for the getters to ensure our users, uh, the, the one who's trying to read the code, that this function will never, ever, ever, ever change anything. It's safe to use. It's good to use. But as you can see, right here, set bar int value, it changes the value. It's not constant. We can do it with ease. Okay. So that was that. Now we have another one. Another way of using const is that we put that thing in the be in the back of the function. So in the, in the back in the beginning of the function. So if I do something like this, let's say I have another function here. Let's say const int get something. Wait, const return. Well, not really, shouldn't be const, because you can't really have a member, have a function that's not a member function be const. So, yeah, get something. Now, let's get something. So, int x is get something, and then I can do x++. Plus plus. Well, this kind of works, because it's returning a const int, it's returning the copy of a const int, but if I do something like this, or rather, if I do something like this, then I can't really set it to that. So it, this is kind of a safe, um, kind of a fail-safe, or rather a safeguard for when you're trying to return um, these kind of guys. All right. So if you're trying to return a reference to something, you can have that reference be set to anything, but it's going to be a constant reference. Now, in this, this is not really a good example. You can't really um, get the gist of it when we get to these guys right here. So. I can do something like, um, let's actually go ahead and create a method that is actually pretty useful. So, I mean, not useful, but, you know, foo reference f, and that's it. That's all I care about. So, foo reference f, I'm going to go ahead and clear, create the thing, and we're going to do the reference of this. We're going to return this guy. So we're going to get the pointer to the same uh, instance of the class. We're going to reference it to make it a reference instead of a pointer, and we're going to send that back out. Okay, so now we have this guy right here. Now let's try to call it. So f.f, .f, which was the name of the function, badly designed. Now here's the thing. When you return something like this, you create what we call a cascading design. So you can basically keep calling this BS until you reach a function that doesn't return the same object again. So I can call f as many times as I want. That's basically how it works. But here's the thing. You can do, if this guy is right here, I could do f.f, .f, let's say, let's say this guy has, uh, let's say the y is public. Okay, it's a bad design del y is equal to 10. Okay, so I can do some stupid thing like this if this guy doesn't return a constant. But if I do something like this, then, well, first off, this is going to be an issue right here. It's not going to let me do that because of, oh, yeah, because of this guy right here. So i got to change them in both places. Now, when that happens, as you can see, I can't really set it to anything. So when you put a const, this was a bad example, but when you put a const behind a function that returns a reference, it's kind of a safeguard to let you know that you can't change anything. So if I do something like this, then all is good and well. I can use the y anywhere I want, but I can't change it. I'm not allowed to change it because it's going to return a constant reference of what I want. And so that's basically it. Oh, where are we going? Okay, so that was this guy right here. Now let's talk about a little bit of a, you know, the two most complicated constants, or rather the three. Well, these are not really complicated. You just need to realize exactly what each of these mean and just got to make it logical. And it is logical. Okay, so we have a constant pointer. A int pointer const and a constant pointer const. Const. Okay. I know this might look complicated, but don't worry, it's not. Okay. So we have the first one, constant pointer ptr. Now, what I want you to do is take whatever is behind the pointer 
and put it inside the parentheses. Now, this is a this is a syntax. This has a syntax error, as you can see. Other pointer is undefined because this is BS, but uh, it's kind of bullshit. So don't do this within your code. It's not gonna run. I just want you to understand. So just try to do this. Okay, this will be a pointer to a constant integer. Okay, so what this means is that this guy is a pointer to a constant. So I can do something like const int a equals 10, and then I can do constant pointer ptr is equal to the address of a. Simple and easy, just like that. Now this is pointing to a constant integer. It, it means I can change the pointer value itself, but I can't change the thing that it's referencing. Even if it's the same thing, I can't dereference it and change it. Expression must be a modifiable L value. Expression must be modifiable. And this is basically what it means. Or rather, all it means. So, when you put a pointer after a constant int, it means that the thing is constant. Now, there's another way of doing this. It's in pointer const. Okay, so, when you're doing something like this, in pointer const, ptr equals to the address of, let's say, b. We have another one here, int b equals 20. So we have it set to the address of b. I can do the reference of ptr2. Let's do ptr2 because we have ptr1 or ptr. I can do ptr2 equals 10, all good and dandy, but I can't do ptr2++. So this basically means that the pointer itself is constant. I can't change the value of my pointer as is. Okay, I cannot change the value, and this is actually a very good design. Okay, we usually do this just to make sure that the pointers are safe and sound. We can't really change them to point to anything else. So let's say I have another int here, and c equals 10. I can't really do pointer 2 is equal to the value of c because it's a constant pointer, and that's basically all there is to it. Now, these might look a bit different, or rather uh, complex, but don't worry, you'll get used to them when you use them enough times. Now, we have another one, constant pointer, const pointer, um, should be quite simple. You already know what it is, and, you know, you already know what it is. So let's make it happen. This is going to be equal to the address of C. Now, what this means, or rather, address of A, because A is a const, const thing. So what this means is, basically, you can't change the value of pointer itself, you can't change the value of what it's referencing. So you can't really do pointer 3 is equal to, let's say, A. You can't, even if it's the same thing, you just can't. And pointer 3, the reference version of pointer 3 is equal to 10. You can't do anything with it, you just can't get it. There is no setting anything after you've declared something like this. So that's basically it with this guy, these pointers. Now there's one more thing that remains to be talked about. Void by ref const string in const parameters. Okay, let's see what the const parameters are. So let's create a function kind of like this. So it takes a constant std string reference int. Okay. Why should we use a const here? Well, the reason becomes visible when we look at this guy right here. So, if you remember right, I told you that when we were using references, we could pass out more than one things. It just, you know, not by return, we could pass in more things out. So we could pass values by reference, we could swap things, we could do a whole bun bunch of stuff when we're talking about references within our parameter range. So. This guy basically means that I can put in to something like ABC, and that's it. I have now passed in, passed out another variable just like that. So that was the use of reference right here. But why should we use a constant? Well, when you use a constant in the reference, we're talking about, well, we're telling the programmer who's seeing this that we are only going to take this as an input parameter. It's not an output, it's an input. So, all this means is basically, whatever you're giving it, it's not going to change. 
Okay, but here's the question you might ask. Why the hell are we using a reference in the first place? Why not just use it like this? Well, the reason to that is, when we're using references to pass in types, it's not going to pass a copy of it. Okay, it's not going to copy the entire thing and pass that into the function. It's just going to send it directly into the function. So, there's no copying operation being done. So, it's very good to do something like this on types that are, you know, potentially huge. Like strings. Strings could be from bytes to megabytes. You know, simple and easy like that. Now, if you had to, like, copy 10 megabytes every single time you were going to process a string, or let's say an image. You want to get an image, make it black and white, or, you know, do whatever you want, and then pass it back out. So, you don't really have to copy it two times. You're copying it once inside, you're doing some processing, then you're passing it back out. That is bad design. So, we do something like this to make up speed. So, we do this reference to, you know, um, improve our speed and we make it a const because we want to safeguard anybody, anyone who's trying to change the thing. And so, that's basically what this const is going to do. Now, here's a key point that I want you to remember. There is never, ever, ever, ever something we put without any reason. Anything we put anywhere in our code definitely has a reason. Sometimes I do something like this. I do define out and then I do some stupid thing like this or something like this. Now this is an empty thing. It's like absolutely putting nothing here but it helps me understand that this is going to send something out. So even if there is something absolutely pointless looking like this guy putting here being put here it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that it's useless. It doesn't mean that it's pointless. It's going to help me in some way. And so is the constant. Constant keyword, um, reference, you know, anything you can think of. And so that's basically what this use case of this entire thing, you know, sums up to. When you put a const here, you know that you can change it. You don't accidentally change it. It's kind of, um, you know, more than, more of a design kind of a thing rather than coding principles because to the eyes of the compiler it's not really that different it just allows you or rather helps you with not making mistakes or you know something like that and so that's basically it guys for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a like if you have any questions do ask them in the comments and if you really enjoyed it do subscribe that will help a lot thank you very much I'll see you in the next one